Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, March 24th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about Lisa Murkowski, the senator from the state of Alaska, who claims that she's done with Donald Trump and refuses to endorse him in the 2024 election and won't rule out leaving the Republican Party. Now, Lisa Murkowski has been serving in the United States Senate from Alaska since 2004. She was first appointed to the Senate seat by her father, Frank Murkowski, when he retired in 2002. When, her, when I say she served from 2004, that was her first real election in which she had served out and won in a full term in six years' time. And so looking at it in 2004, Lisa Murkowski has always been in Alaska as a Republican, somebody who from the very, very beginning, including the legacy of her father and previous previous uh, election bids, whether it comes down to the governorship or the senatorial election, the Rep Republican Party has been the party for the Murkowskis for decades on end. In 2010, she was primaried in the GOP uh, by members of the Tea Party. She was largely seen as someone who wasn't Republican enough, who didn't represent the ideology of the GOP. Yet she decided to stay in the race and run a write-in campaign to which she ended up winning the United States Senate election in Alaska and completely fracturing Republican support across the state. She was re-elected easily back in 2022 by a margin of roughly 15 percentage points in a multi-way race and then defeated a Republican, Kelly Shibaka, in the state of Alaska by a margin of roughly 6 percentage points in this state. And so Alaska for a while is a state... You know, we have seen, Ben, a very, very strong Republican stronghold. We haven't really seen much Democratic support across the state, especially on the presidential level. And the last time it went blue was in 1964 when Lyndon B. Johnson won the state. From there on out, Alaska was a very solid conservative state up until recently when Donald Trump won the state by just 10.1%. It was the narrowest that Alaska has been in decades for the Republican Party, and it was a very big concern for the GOP because it led to what we would see in the 2022 House elections, which was a Democratic pickup in the state of Alaska. Now, the interesting thing about this state is that Representative Don Young, who first started off in Congress from the state of Alaska in 1972, won election after election after election from 1972 up until 2020, when he won by 9.1%, slightly underperforming Donald Trump, but still winning in a way that was pretty strong for the GOP. But then came in a Democrat, and that Democrat was Mary Peltola, who had no previous electoral experience across the state and came into this as someone who was polling in a distant third place. But she was propped up because she was the only Democrat in her special election. And Alaska has ranked choice voting, and consequently, the voters there said, ultimately, they would prefer her to Sarah Palin, who came in second place. Sarah Palin then filed to run in November of 2022 and lost to Mary Peltola by roughly 10 percentage points across the state. And now today, Mary Peltola stands as the most popular uh, elected official from the state of Alaska. And so what does all this conversation about Alaska's electability and Mary Peltola in Alaska have to do with comments like these being made by Lisa Murkowski? Well, I think we're in a bit of different, a, a very different situation than when we were back in 2021, when, you know, Lisa Murkowski at one point in time gave the idea or the inclination that she might leave the Republican Party. When she was first, you know, running for re-election in 2022, in that election season, it was immediately after the January 6th insurrection. Lisa Murkowski had made multiple claims that Donald Trump needed to leave the party and that if they were to adopt him as their leader again, she would question if the party was genuinely for her. Now, this was three days after January 6th, but what was more important to Lisa Murkowski likely wasn't the insurrection, but in fact the general election that she was going to face in the coming year. You see, Lisa Murkowski floated the idea that she might leave the Republican Party, which ultimately led to people like Kelly Shibaka, who decided to challenge Lisa Murkowski from the right and run in the general election and make it in the top four as a conservative alternative to Lisa Murkowski. And she did quite well. She received the endorsement from Donald Trump and had been a very, very strong challenger to Lisa Murkowski, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that Lisa Murkowski's base was largely reliant on Democratic support. But she would not have been able to win the Senate race without Republican support. The 2022 midterm elections were very, very interesting, and the Alaska Senate race was no different. When you take a look at the first round of voting, Lisa Murkowski received just 43% of the vote as the incumbent. Pat Chesbro, who was the Democrat here, received roughly 10%, and by the end of all the votes being counted in the ranked choice format that they adopted back in 2020, Lisa Murkowski 
won by roughly six to seven points. But she relied on that Republican support, and I'm sure those closest to her when it came down to the issue of electability and the possibility that she might be running for re-election and deciding that this is where she was going to be, hopefully, in her eyes, for the next six years, she decided to stay with the Republican Party. The conversation surrounding whether she was going to leave the Republican Party and switch to an independent who caucused with Republicans, or maybe an independent who caucused with Democrats, we really didn't know. The immediate aftermath of January 6th led to a significant number of departures from the mainstream GOP. But she decided to stay in the party, and that was the last we had heard of it up until now. And so Alaska now is a state that isn't as Republican as it was when we were talking about it in 2021. It now has a Democratic representative and, genuinely speaking, might be closer in this election than it was in the last one. And that matters for people like Murkowski, because she won't be up for re-election until 2028, until four years' time from now, and she has been so exceptionally adamant that the party, the Republican Party, that she was under for a long period of time is not the party of today. The party of Donald Trump is not the party she's proud to be part of or represent in the United States Senate. And I think this is speaking to a general thing that we are seeing on the Republican side, whether it's the issue of Trump or the issue of inefficiencies within the Republican Party, an embarrassment to be a member of the Republican Party, comments that are made by members of Congress, decisions, departures, resignations that are made by members of Congress here. All of it is wrapped up into one fundamental thing, and that is the Republican Party seems to be turning off many, many of their own members. And I think that's the problem here. And I think it speaks again, just generally, to the fact that Donald Trump is in a way, while maybe, you know, a benefit to the party in the Rust Belt or a benefit to the party when it comes down to, you know, uh, you know, idolization of politicians and fundamental support and, you know, unwavering and undying fealty from the members of his constituency and the members of his party, you know, while he may be beneficial in that regard, I could see that. I could be persuaded that that is what he is doing for the party, that he is building a personality around himself that will likely transcend him. The downside of it is that I think people see that and maybe they're not inside this Trump camp or on the Republican side and they think it's crazy. They think it's insane. That's what Lisa Murkowski seemingly thinks about the Republican Party today. The fact is, she was elected and had long standing been a Republican in the state of Alaska. Her father served as governor. Her father served as a senator. Her father was involved in electoral politics in Alaska. She's been this. She's walked the walk for the past 20 years in the U.S. Senate. She's been a Republican through and through, and in 95% of votes, aligns with the GOP on these issues. But it is these irreconcilable differences that make it impossible for many of these people to maintain themselves as Republicans. We saw a major, major, you know, departure from the Republican Party from some of the more moderate, more, you know, centered people in this party. And Lisa Murkowski doesn't seem to be too different. While I don't know if she will entirely decide to leave the Republican Party, I think she's not ruling it out for a reason. It is a news story that an incumbent senator from a political party decides, you know, ultimately that they want to leave, you know, their political party, potentially even switch over. The last time we had something as major as that happen was in 2010 when Arlen Specter was elected and decided that he was going to, or 2004 when he was elected as a Republican, and then around 2009, 2010 decided that he was going to switch from Republican to Democrat. And it switched the party, you know, the balance of power for a few weeks and very, very few, uh, few weeks. You found that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, their composition in the U.S. Senate, Democrat to Republican, was 60 to 40. And that happened because Arlen Specter decided ultimately the Republican Party, the party of the Tea Party, the party that was anti-Obama, the party that he had been part of before was not the party that he believed in today, not the party that, you know, he was part of now, that the party had moved beyond his traditional conservative values and his traditional values around maintaining, you know, a quality of life for Americans, you know, good paying jobs, a good economy. I mean, there were multiple reasons Arlen Specter decided to leave the party. But I think what we found was that it did happen and it had an, an immediate effect on the conversations we had around the election, the possibilities that people had had when it came down to this race. And it also just shows that it is not entirely you know, unorthodox for situations like these to arise, where members of a party that have been there for decades on end ultimately decide on their own volition that the party is no longer for them. And that because of people, whether that's those on the national presidential stage or people in the statewide delegation or people that are propped up by the national RNC or the DNC, depending on the party that is being discussed and at risk at this point, 
shows that, you know, you know, while that may be something that is happening, this is something that we have seen happen before. We have seen a major prominent member, you know, a prominent, prominent member of the U.S. Senate delegation deciding to switch political parties. And I don't think Lisa Murkowski is entirely against it. I think while she may always be an independent, I don't think she switches to the Democratic Party. And I think that's a pipe dream for Democrats because they would love to hold a Senate race in the state of Alaska. But she has also said this, that she's an independent that she's always been an independent, but when pressed out about whether or not she will stay with the Republican Party, she says she's making a lot of difficult political decisions. That doesn't sound like somebody who's secure or certain. Well, I think this may be a threat, and I think that we've seen these threats before, not only from her, but other candidates too. People like Justin Amash, who ultimately end up do switching third party and then fade off into irrelevancy because of a move like that one. I think you often find that while threatening may be a powerful tool, especially when it comes down to the U.S. Senate. For as long as she remains an independent who caucuses with the, with the Republican Party, the overall composition of the U.S. Senate won't be fundamentally changed. The chances at which you maintain the majority in 2026 uh, or win the majority in 2024 or win or maintain the majority in 2026 really do not change tremendously. I mean, we remember all the conversation and the speculation around Kirsten Cinema being an independent. And the problem wasn't that she was an independent who caucused with Democrats because it didn't take away from the Democratic Party's numbers. And at the end of the day, she did vote with Democrats 90% plus of the time. The concern that they no longer have because she's not running for Senate was about electability. It was about the general election, about Trump versus Biden in an election like this one, where she was going to be on the ballot with Carrie Lake and Ruben Gallego and whoever else decided to qualify, you know, weeks or months before the election. And so that's what Democrats were worried about. They were worried about vote splitting. But I don't think Democrats are going to be worried about this. I think Lisa Murkowski, despite, you know, all that it is worth conversing about and worth discussing about the possibility of a flip in a U.S. Senate race in the U.S. Senator's position that's been serving in Congress in the U.S. Senate for 20 years, I think the only time really to do this is now or the next coming year. And then by then you sort of become, you know, entering into your lame duck scenario. I think the Republican, uh, you know, support against her would start to become stronger and stronger, especially if they get rid of ranked choice voting because she largely won because Democrats. Democrats decided to choose her over Kelly Shibaka. But at the end of the day, I think our takeaway from this and what I think, you know, has really been emphasized and should be emphasized through this is that Lisa Murkowski's unwillingness to rule out leaving the GOP speaks volumes. It shows there is dissatisfaction and dysfunction in a party that needs to be on its A game. While Donald Trump may be leading the national numbers, the generic ballot and the down ballot senatorial, gubernatorial, congressional races don't look as strong. And there's a reason for that. Republicans are in a difficult position. And as more and more members of their House delegation decide to resign early instead of just retiring at the end of their terms, and Lisa Murkowski is floating the very real possibility that she leaves the Republican Party, it's never a good look, and all of it is optics. Optics that the Republican Party just simply can't deal with and can't seem to combat. And so when we fast forward to the 2024 House elections here, Republicans are going to be worried and honestly should be. Where we are when it comes down to these important battleground states, districts, whatever it might be, every single thing matters. Just look at how close some of these elections were on the congressional level back in 2022, or even back in 2020, for instance, in a district like Iowa's second, where Marionette Miller Meeks won by 0.0015%. She won by, you know, a handful of votes. I believe it was six votes when it came down to the actual calling of the race. Six votes in a race with nearly 400,000 voters. And so whenever we talk about this, I want you to know, you know, your vote absolutely matters. No matter where you're from, no matter what city, what district, what state, your vote in some capacity absolutely matters. And I think that's important to emphasize. And so what I think too, you know, while that may be getting a little bit off tangent here is that, you know, every single, every single perception, every single, you know, Im or, uh, influence on voters in races like this one can make or break a congressional campaign, can make or break a congressional majority. And so for the sake of the Republican Party, I think they should hope that Lisa Murkowski does not leave the GOP because it will send a shockwave across this country that a sitting U.S. Republican senator decides to leave the party in the same way that Kirsten Sinema receives so much airtime, so much political conversation, so much discussion. The same likely would happen for Lisa Murkowski. And at this point in time, Republicans can't afford to lose anyone. 
So it'll be very fascinating to see what happens, what her decision ends up being, if she ends up switching to independent, if she decides to stay with the GOP, or in the off, 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 tremendously off chance that she decides to join the Democrats, which I just don't think is going to happen. But weirder things have happened. This is American politics, and only time will tell. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.